Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we are making some beautiful grass to go with our rock and wood. You can find lots of these playlists on gabbit.co.uk or you can just check my YouTube channel under the playlist section. So this is the second part of the texture painting with stencils course and many people asked how I do the grass so here we go. This is the sort of cheapest and easiest way of making grass and is often used by game engines because it's best for performance. We'll be using particle systems and I'll give a brief introduction to what they are and how to use them. So, so far you should have a rock and a post. I'll just make these into a very simple scene. Okay, so a very, very simple rock and post scene that you might see maybe at the beach. I don't know why you would. <laughs> but you can make up your own scenes. More importantly is the grass. So shift A to add a plane and this is gonna be the emitter for our grass. So I'll scale that up. Just go to top view and align it to the center of our little scene here. So our grass will go on here. Now I'm going to keep it as a simple plane for now, but later on we will need to subdivide it, but I'll explain more about that later. So the first thing we want to do is add some sort of texture to this so that anytime we see the base, we see some sort of grass texture. So let's go to the shading tab and choose new. And I'm going to plug in a grass texture. Now all the textures for the grass that I'm using are from textures.com. You'll find them under nature and under plants. And they must be an alpha. So they've got to have this sort of checkered pattern in the background that tells you that they are an alpha texture. So they have a transparent channel and you can see all these beautiful grasses here. And it's good to have maybe three or four to add lots of nice variation. For a grass texture, you might want to go back to the actual grass section here and choose some sort of grass texture. I believe on polygon, there's a really nice forest ground texture and that can be quite a good one to use especially if you want to use a PBR for the base and have some sort of bump in it. That's more if you are actually going to see some of the base and you only want a small amount of grass particles. So back to Blender. Let's add some sort of grass texture in here then. So Shift A, Texture, Image Texture. Let's open our grass. So you can see I've got lots of grass textures here and I'll just use a very basic one here. Plug that in and we've got some really chunky grass. I'll press Control T on my texture. You must have the Node Wrangler add-on installed. I've talked about this before, but Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node Wrangler and make sure it's ticked. That way you can click on your texture and press Control T and get up the texture coordinates and mapping. And I can bump the scale up by clicking and dragging over all three of these scale options and maybe go up to five. And there we've got some grass. Again, I'm not going to see much of this base texture, so I'm not too worried about what it looks like. It is possibly a touch bright, so we could easily add something in here. Let's say Shift A, color, brightness and contrast will work, hue and saturation, curves. I'll just go for hue and saturation this time and bring down the value a bit. There we go, so it's a bit darker. I went for hue and saturation because you can actually change the hue if you want as well. But I might have it a bit more yellowy, but we'll see. It's probably a good idea as well to put up the roughness and the specular down and then it looks more grassy and less like a shiny plane. Okay, so that's a really basic texture. You don't have to put this hue and saturation in. You can do a PBR texture if you like, but we're more interested in the particle system. So with the plane selected, let's go back to layout mode. So we've got more space to play with and down to the particles, which is over here. So let's add a particle system and I'll explain exactly what they do. There's two types, there's emitter and hair. Emitter, if I press the space bar, you can see it's emitting things and you can add an object to these and make it emit certain objects from your plane. You can also change the gravity and the direction and all sorts. But we want to go for hair, so I'll press spacebar again to stop my animation and go to hair, and you can see it's got all these strands coming up like this. Very tall at the moment, but don't worry about that. But when you're wanting to create grass, you're using the hair particle system. Also, we'll want to tick advance. There's lots of options within advance, like rotation and so forth, that we'll want to use. Now it's worth pointing out again at this point that there are two ways of doing the sort of grass hair particles. One is to actually model a grass clump. So getting some planes, making them into grass strands, rotating them, bending them and all sorts to make a complex grass object. Or we can do it the more simple way, which won't give as good of results, but it's much cheaper on your processor. And that's what a lot of game engines use. It's much easier to set up as well. And with a bit of tweaking, you can get it looking pretty amazing. So before I change any of my settings here, I'm going to add that texture in that we're going to use and duplicate. So each of these strands will become that 
texture. So I'll go into top view and move my cursor over to here so it will be off the plane. And in order for this to work, we need to have another add-on enabled and that is image as planes. So edit, preferences, add-ons, and then type image, import images as planes. Make sure that's ticked. That way when we press shift A and we go down to image, we've got image as planes. Now we can go to our grass textures and you can see all these transparent textures here. If you want to use just one texture, you can have all your grass in one texture, and that is better for less texture calls in games and performance wise. So I'm just going to go for this one here and press import image planes. And the great thing about this, if I just quickly go across to the shading mode to see how it's set up, it's set up our grass plugged into our principled shader using the alpha so it's transparent. I'll just zoom in on the object so you can see it. It's also set up in our options, the alpha blend and the opaque, so it will be see-through. So this is great, let's go back to layout now, and I'll just get in a position where I can see the plane and the particles. So let's click on the particle system again, or the plane, which has the particle system, and we want to tell the particle system to use this object instead of these strands like this. And that's under render. Instead of saying render as path, we render as object. You can actually use a collection as well, so you can put lots of these in a collection and choose which ones you want and so forth. I'm just going to keep it simple and go for object. So we've got object, but they're not appearing. That's because we haven't chosen our object. So where it says object down here, we click on the color picker, pipette, or whatever you want to call it, and we choose our fluffy grass. And there they all are. Now you'll notice that they're halfway through the plane like this. That's because our object center is in the center of our plane. So if I go back to my plane over here, or my fluffy grass, I need that object center or pivot point to be at the bottom. So we can now in Blender 2.81 go to options and origins and then we can move that origin. If you're using an earlier version you actually have to go into edit mode and move the whole thing and the origin stays still. But this way we can just press G then Z, pull it down and then go back to options and untick origins. So if you want to move that origin point you have to go up to options and origins, make sure it's ticked and then we can move the origin, and if you want to go back to normal, you untick origins. So now I can grab in the Z and it'll move the whole thing. Okay, now if we look at our plane, you can see that they're all sticking up from the origin point. That's great. Doesn't look great at the moment though. So there's a few settings we need to change. Let's click on our plane. What I forgot to say somehow in recording is that you must have the advanced box ticked, so it's just under here there. That will give us a few extra options like rotation coming up in a moment. Now still under the render settings, we can change the scale and we can scale it up, maybe somewhere around there. And the scale randomness is useful as well because it adds variation. And we're looking a bit better now. It's worth noting that the scale randomness always brings things down. It never makes things bigger than the scale up here. So if you want to make the whole thing bigger, you bring it up there and then more randomness will bring some of them down. Okay, looking better, but there's still a few things we need to do. One of the main things is rotation. I'll tick on rotation and bring down the disclosure. And there's a few things we'll want to change in there, but before you do that, it's really helpful to go down to the children panel. And we want to change it across to interpolated. So basically we have a display amount and a rendered amount. So in the viewport, we can see 10 times our, if I go to the top here, number, which is 1000 without the interpolation, and then we've got this funny children option here, which adds, for each of those, it adds another 10. The rendered amount is actually adding 100, so it's got a display amount and a rendered amount for fast viewport interactions. Now we don't really need that many. Um, I think this is actually enough, so we'll keep the rendered amount at 10 as well. And if I just click off, you can see what that looks like, and that's certainly fine. It may actually be a bit too many, so I'm going to just turn that down to five, and the rendered amount to five as well. So you will want to play with these a little bit and see what they look like. I'm using this sort of my base grass, so I might turn the scale up a little bit. So under the render settings, maybe come up with a scale and maybe just a few more then, eight, I think. Okay, that's great. Now the problem is they look great from this side and not so much from this side. And that's obviously because we're using a plane and that's where we want to use that rotation option. So let's go back up to rotation and we've got some randomize options here, but when I drag that across, that doesn't do anything. We've got a phase option and that moves them all together, which is quite interesting. And I believe you might be able to do some animation with that. And we've got the randomize phase there. 
Now the randomized phase is working quite well and that's working when we move around and it's making the grass look half decent. But notice the randomize isn't doing much and that's to do with the orientation axis. At the moment it's fine under velocity slash hair and it's working well for what we want. If you press something like the global Z then that will definitely all point directly upwards and then the things like the randomize actually start working and you could even use this for some animation as well. So there's a few options in here. The globalized Z will always point straight upwards and then you can add some randomize to it and that's probably the safest way. But sometimes you just have to tweak and see what works well for you, especially if you've got some sort of hills going on in here and things that might make a bit of a difference. So at the moment it's looking quite nice. We could possibly up the count a bit, but let's see what it looks like when we add another particle system. Now there is one thing that's worth pointing out. If you choose object rotation, they all go flat. And it's a very strange thing this. I don't particularly understand why this happens. But for some reason you will need to rotate this so it's flat. So R, Y, 90. And then they all stand up. I don't really understand why that is. Maybe some clever blender out there can tell me. But it's something you don't have to worry about too much if you haven't got the object rotation ticked and it's got an orientation axis here. But you may find that when you're fiddling around, you might want to use the object rotation if you're using some of these other ones here to get the right look. And there is a bit of experimentation depending on your scene. So let's add another one in. Let's Shift A, Images Planes, and we'll find another grass texture. So this time I'll use this interesting one here. Actually, no, this one looks quite interesting. This looks quite fluffy, so I'm going for fluffy grass today. So we'll choose that one. I'll just move it to the side slightly. They might be a bit too similar, but we'll see how we get on. So back on our plane, another particle system, choosing hair again. So there's our hair standing up. I'm going to turn the other one off for a moment. So this one here, I'll call this fluffy grass because that's the name of the texture. So fluffy grass is our original and turn that off for the moment. So we can only see this new one, which is tall fluffy grass. It does help to name your particle systems if you're doing it this way around. So same process again, choosing object and then actually choosing the correct object with the pipette and across here. Again, it's in the middle, so we'll have to change that origin point. So click on our grass, up to origins, grab that origin in the Z axis and move it down to the bottom. Untick origins. Hopefully there'll be a shortcut for that soon. <laughs> and back to our particle system to play with the settings. So first of all, down to children interpolated. And we don't want so many of this, so we'll just go one and one, because this is going to be a bit taller. So in fact, we don't really need the children, but I'm leaving it there just in case I want to increase the count. So back up to the render settings, and we'll change the scale. This one's going to be quite tall, maybe somewhere around there, and again, a nice lot of randomness. We'll just quickly check what that looks like with the other one in. I'll turn overlays off for a second, and we might want to make our fluffy grass a bit taller. It's looking pretty interesting. The fluffy grass, this isn't helpful that I've called them both fluffy grass, the original fluffy grass, we might want to actually make a tiny bit shorter. So bring that one down a touch. There we go. It's looking quite interesting, but we still need to change that phase and that randomness. So let's turn the original fluffy grass off so we can see the effects of that and move into a position where we want to change the rotation. And we'll go to our rotation panel with our tall fluffy grass and notice that the rotation is not appearing. That's because I haven't ticked advanced. So tick on advanced to make sure you get that rotation option. Now we can start playing around with the phase and the phase random and see what's going on. Maybe somewhere around there. When we bring the other one back, it's starting to look fairly good. And perhaps we want to use the global Z so that they're all pointing upwards and then that random phase will turn them in the other direction. Now notice what happens when I use the object rotation and rotate this so it's flat. I'll turn my overlays back on so I can see what I'm clicking on. RY90. Now when I click back on the emitter and go to that rotation, I get slightly more options when I change it to global Z and start using the randomize so I can move it around a bit more. So that's what the object rotation allows us to do. And that does look a bit nicer and offers a bit more variation to our grass. So I'll quickly add a third one just for some more variation. Choose this one here. I'll move it across and move the origin point. Click on my plane, add a new emitter. I'll just hide the other ones for now. Use the hair, 
use advanced, go to render, object, choose my object with the pipette, and let's change the scale and vary it a bit. Now, I feel like there's a bit too many of these, so I can actually just change the number on the emitter and bring it right down. So I'm bringing it down to maybe 500 or something, maybe even less than that, 300. There we go. Make sure object rotation is ticked. They'll all go flat. So we need to rotate our object, RY90, and they're all standing up now. These ones are very similar to the ground plane, so they're a bit tricky to see. But click on our ground plane again. I better name this. I'm gonna call it yellow because it's got slightly yellow pieces in. And let's make sure rotation is ticked. Use that Z axis, global Z. Bit of randomness, bit of random phase. Bring the other ones back. Turn off overlays and see how we're looking. I think maybe some of them are a bit tall, so we need to mess with the settings a bit more. And I think I need a bit more in between, so I might even choose a sort of greener grass to go in the middle of everything. So I'll quickly time lapse that. At this point, you might want to go in and start changing the scales of your grass to something more suitable. They seem like this grass is completely overtaking the landscape, but you might want that. The last thing we want to do is go up to the shading tab and put in some sort of environment. So let's press full stop or period key on my numpad, zoom into my plane and turn the overlays off for now. So let's go to world and we want to add an HDRI. So shift A, texture, environment texture, and find a nice HDRI image. So these are images that surround the background and they offer some light as well. I use this nice one from the beach in my previous one. I'll probably go with that again, I think, because I think it looked great. Hook that one up. HDRI Haven have lots of lovely HDRIs that you can download for free. So that's great, it's not appearing, so we need to go to the Render tab to find that one. Now if I start zooming in, the background kind of blends in with our scene, although we've got a bit of grass compared to the beach. It just depends on your angle a little bit. So we've got that, that looks fine. The other thing that you'll want to do is go across to your Render tab and turn on Ambient Occlusion. That will just add that ambient occlusion that you need in the rocks and things. You might want to, depending on the size you're seeing, turn it up. Can you see the effect that's having when I turn it up? It just adds that shading in between the grass. So I'm going to, on this scene, up to 1.25. You have to be a bit careful. You can see in there it's sort of blending onto the other rock, but it seems to be working all right. And that's looking quite nice, really. The very last thing that you may want to do with your camera in your scene, so if I press zero to go to my camera settings, N and view, lock camera to view, and find a nice position for my camera, somewhere around here, let's say. You might want to choose a depth of field. That will allow the background edges to go all blurry. So with your camera selected, you can go to your camera settings and then choose depth of field. And let's choose one of these posts as a focus object. So that one there and the aperture you need to bring quite low in order for depth of field to work. The interesting thing is that I'm sure that the focal length should make a big difference to this, but when I said that to the developers, they didn't agree with me. So you have to put your f-stop unnaturally low, I would say, to something like 0.5, and then you can see that depth of field. And that's actually an extremely low aperture. But if someone else knows about depth of field and they can advise me on that, I'd be very grateful. But there we've got some lovely grass textures happening and our scene's looking great. I'll probably do a few tweaks to the size of some of these because I think they're a bit big, but hopefully that gives you enough information to create your own grassy, beautiful landscapes. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.